Morning. Morning. Doria is back. We'll go into more detail about what the work studies entail. My name is Deku. I've been running through this hall, fighting my classmates with a smile on my face. I suggest you listen carefully as they point out how work studies differ from internships. I see, we got another uh, enthusiastic arms mover. The big three. The big three. That's what he looks like. He reminds me of the the Fallout icon, the Fallout mascot. You know what I'm talking about? Pip Boy, whatever. <laughs> big Pip. Is this the last time I'm gonna hear this intro? In show? Sad. Sad. I really come to appreciate it. It was all here. It was all here from the beginning. If you know what to look for. Never. Todoroki. Gang Orca. We should got a little more of him, to be honest. And Bakugo was feeling guilty, turns out. It's been a pretty amazing season, looking back. Unrivaled. On a different level, still in school, but practically pro heroes. The senpais, the seniors. They don't look all that special to me, except the appearances girl, can be deceiving. <laughs> he was in the sports festival I watched from home last year. <gasps> he didn't do very well, but he uh, definitely left a strong impression. Oh, does he have to take off his clothes when he does that weird floor thing? Either. Interesting. School challenges aren't everything. So much intensity in a single glance. <laughs> Is this a what he turned everyone into potatoes? Even if I try to imagine them as potatoes, I can see their <laughs> human bodies. After Cookie Dough Bro, I, I really thought that was his quirk. This is our kitten, Tamaki Yamajiki. And hi, my name is Najiri Hado. Najiri Hado. Got it. How'd you get that big burn on your face? <clears throat> oh my god, she just gets right to it. It's very direct. Mineta, are those balls your hair or what? I don't get it. <laughs> it took me a while too. He bleeds when he takes them out. Questions make her sound so young. She wants to know everything about my balls. <laughs> Come on, tell me. I really want to know. None of this will matter if they can perform well in terms of their quirks where it counts. And my guess about this is that they work really well as a team, that they have quirks that complement each other, which is perhaps why they wouldn't perform well in a one on one series of battles in a tournament, for example. The only quirk we know so far is Fallout Boy, and I don't even know if I know the full extent of it. I just know that his face can appear in walls, and that is. Highly disturbing. I'm up next and I'll get the audience refocused. The future's gonna be... <laughs> gonna be what? <laughs> oh, no. Is it just me or does it seem like each one of them is a complete weirdo? Don't underestimate them. Don't do it. Heads up! Doubling down? new plan is all you first years fight me at once! Huh? Oh. Oh, wow. Well, if you want them to experience our experience, this is a pretty rational way of doing it then. Ride eraser head? Do whatever you want. Yeah, this is right up as I was alley. <laughs> Direct combat experience. No one wants to spend the next few years in a hospital bed. Huh? Wow. Just really laying the groundwork for Yeah, 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 for terror. Story time. Long ago, a student got frustrated in class and quit being a hero, and it was terrible for everyone. Did you know that? Aizawa knows that. These are probably Aizawa's former students, right? So what's the deal with that story? That seems like a, a little bit of a tease there. Do we know this person? Are they a villain? Is it Dobby? There is a 99% chance I'm misremembering this, but when they made contact in the forest, did Aizawa remember him? Aizawa has baggage about this, it, it seems. Something seems to have gone wrong with one of the students, and that would make sense when you think about it, right? You have how many people with powers passing through these halls with smiles on their faces? Not all of them are going to make it, and some of them are going to be disillusioned with hero society, and that could potentially be a major source of internal conflict for some of the teachers who wish they had done more, but this is all just speculation, so we'll have to see. You're obviously much further ahead than us, but we've fought pros before. Not to mention we took down some legitimate villains. I don't think you There's need to worry about hurting us. There's definitely an asymmetry of information here. He knows something that they don't. I'm first. You stole my thunder! I'll catch up with everything I fell behind on these past three days! <laughs> You can do it. View this as a learning experience. Right, it's right. It's a good opportunity for you. Oh, the problem child. Yes, this is perfect. I've heard you They're got get plenty really of fire well. in you. Interesting. Deku is usually the kind of person that wants to gather data. <laughs> he wins. How do you... Yeah, okay, no. <laughs> That's his quirk. Just take it off his clothes. I can do that too. You're open. Right. How how would you possibly an attack him? What it is. Went for the face, huh? Even the navel beam. He's like he just doesn't exist in in space. Your quirk isn't what you should be jealous of. It's his bod. <laughs> you should be being his skills. Oh yeah, that too. And also his hot bod. <laughs> Power! He also gets text. 
He's on Mineta's level. He is a Mineta level hero. He's the person who's closest to taking the spot of number one hero. Right, he was on Ninja's list. Including the pros. Wow, and he seems like he has a good disposition as well to match. It's not just power. He does seem like a legit candidate, and he does seem like someone who they can learn a lot from. Another influence that can inspire them, and potentially a great ally. I'm trying to think who would who would be a matchup against them in this class. Possibly Kaminari, but I don't know. Maybe no one. Seems like it would have to be a non-physical quirk. What are these magical quirks like? Uh, what was his name? The guy that can freeze you by getting you to answer a question. That kind of thing. And we haven't even seen the other the other two members yet and he what they can more do than half of them in an instant a student but closer to being number one than most heroes I mean this is UA so if you can't tell how much hard work Mirio was put in then you'll never be able to match him there's more to his quirk than we're seeing there you go there's that analysis we should be able to counter him in the moment he's about to make contact right he has to harden or whatever yeah we should theorize with what we do know and use that knowledge to find a way use to beat what you him. can know for now yeah you said it house arrested and put a dent in your fight <laughs> i gotta rub it in and the pants come off again i bet he'll probably come up there watch this an ultimate move he could kill so easily i just realized so easily <laughs> Damn. and he's really fast too Again with the text. <laughs> he needs to learn how to hold back. I mean, given the fact that he can warp into people and kill them instantly, make it so you wouldn't see my he did hold back. <laughs> did you though? Did you really? Yeah, it's too strong. That's not fair. Mike's nothing in comparison. Well, you you said it, not me. Apparently, things with mass can't overlap. That's called physics. So I get repelled upward. Huh. Think of it this way. The ground spits me out and I fly up into the air. That is really convenient. As opposed to him just getting swooshed, you know? That sounds like a buggy video game. <laughs> it, it sort of does, yeah. Funny. My power's only strong because I made it that way. Well, Ooh, here comes the inspiration. My lungs can't take in oxygen. Even if I breathe in, the air will just pass through. Right. And Interesting. Can't go through my retinas. Interesting. Right. This is really well thought out, this whole quirk thing. I'll activate everything except one leg. Then I release the other leg and land on it. And then the first leg is the last one to go through. Even for a simple action like that, there are a bunch of little steps involved. Right, I feel like this is very well done and validates the whole thing they're trying to set up of like, it's not really the quirk, it's him. Because yeah, you can easily imagine that this ability in the hands of someone less motivated would just be sort of a disaster and hard to hard to navigate. But no, in a way, he's the epitome of one of the things that Aizawa's been trying to drive home, which is that they have to develop their quirks to the maximum level. And so while his quirk does have a really interesting range of possibilities and is really cool just innately, that's not the whole story. I feel like talent just in general is not, not enough. As much as we like to think that talent is what determines people's success and as much as we like to use not having talent as an excuse i feel like people who have natural talent become good at things not solely because of their natural talent but because they're able to get rewards from their endeavors a little bit earlier and so that creates a positive feedback loop where they enjoy the process quickly enough to want to keep going so that they end up enjoying the hard work and seeing the pursuit through to a level where they're actually really skilled for really complex things or things that are difficult i think it's the work that will really make up most of the ability ultimately talent seems to be more of like a starting point and in some cases i feel like talent can even work against you because if you have a natural aptitude for something you don't necessarily have to learn how to learn it but there will come a point when you reach a certain level of mastery where you you sort of have to have the ability to grit your teeth and push through plateaus and if things have always come naturally to you you won't know what to do when you hit your first plateau you know what i'm saying so i get what he's saying and it rings true to me that it's not just that he was born lucky that is sort of not the takeaway even if that's true there's sort of nothing you can do with that a more relevant and important question is how did he take the the natural things he had and build it to a point where he can just totally demolish class 1a in like seconds inevitably you're going to find some good qualities there oh man if i were in a hurry i would mess that up every single time yep Furiously, if you can't and you might even destroy yourself how are you supposed to move Growing up, I was always behind, as you might expect. I learned to predict what would happen next. And what made those predictions possible in the first place was experience. Like this guy. I like him. That's why I wanted to fight. To show you through experience rather than words. And he lives the way he believes, if that makes sense. That can be super scary. Pros can get hurt. But every scary and painful thing you go through is an important experience that you yes, can't get I love the it. classroom. I transformed the experience I got in my work study into power. You with me, first years? Yes, I am. <laughs> What a pitch. Damn right. I can't believe he went through all of this for us, even though he could have just explained it. 
No, but experience is the way he wants to live, and he gave it to them. Gotta prepare ourselves for that. It's just what I wanted. Yeah, this is great. This was the most productive ass kicking of all time. I have to keep climbing. And be plus ultra. I don't think I'm ever gonna get used to his voice. Oh, poor Todoroki listening to this. Yeah, yeah. This is crazy. Say thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. For real. He's not standing at the top of UA because he was born strong. Exactly. He worked exactly. incredibly hard to get to that point. Yes. Mirio Togata, third year. <laughs> there's a lot to like about him. So there's the dedication to the craft and the focus on hard work over just coasting on natural abilities. Then there's the experience element he just spoke about, which matches my way of thinking about things very, very closely in terms of my own life. Because most of the stuff that I value the most about myself, I feel that I came into through experience. I really feel like it all comes down to what is your goal, you know, and I think if your goal is to navigate life well and to figure out who you are in the world, then you have to like meet it. And by applying yourself to the reality of the world around you, you can see your own shape better, if that makes sense. Like you see where you are in relation to it. It's no coincidence, I think, that he's talking about fear, about how it's terrifying, but it's also a point of huge growth. That's no accident. If you can have the humility to allow yourself to be wrecked, you know, as long as it's a wreck you can recover from, then you will grow so quickly. It will just eliminate all the superfluous elements of your your beliefs and your behaviors and characters to constantly be whittled down by the real world to get something like tactile feedback about your behaviors and thoughts from life itself you know what i mean the smallest amount of real engagement and real interaction with other people or like circumstances with high stakes or roles of responsibility or whatever it might be are worth so many nights or years or decades of just abstract thought the world exists just as it is and the abstraction is secondary it's a tool to try to understand the things we've experienced going back to the fear thing one thing i've spoken about before that i I really believe in very strongly is that I think a lot of what one is able to accomplish comes down to the amount of pain they're able to tolerate and finding the right kinds of pain, finding the right struggles, you know, finding the struggles that will force a change, you know, eliminate weakness without being catastrophic. A lot of times the biggest source of fear and danger is the fear of realizing just how minuscule and how unskilled we are. But that's good to know if that's true, you know, there's really nothing to be lost by uncovering that through experience. There's nothing to be lost from embarrassment. As long as you have a long-term view and as long as you see each small embarrassment as minuscule in comparison to what's at stake, which is like success at that thing, you know, or actual growth or truly having something illuminated for you. And so people who are able to sort of take that hit, you know, take that ego bruise through failure and keep reaching up and keep putting themselves in challenging situations and taking calculated risks, you know, taking sort of safe risks will often be the ones to experience rapid growth and to have really, really full perspectives on things. Hey, so we thought you'd hurt some of them on accident, you know, but no one was injured. So I think you did a good job. And the fourth thing is body. Got a nice bod. I bet Sir would love to meet him. Who? Sir? If you got trash, then bring it over here right now! <laughs> there you go. Thanks! Sir! I have some as well. Hand it over! Mine too! Wait, mine. Bakugo wasn't there, right? Or was he? Maybe I missed him. Tell got the story of how we went from last place to the top was so killer, wasn't it? Oh, we got a new, uh, a new hot, hot item. I think it was Shook. And if we're going to approve this, we'll have to think of how we'll handle the media. And that's all I can tell you for now. Don't worry about the media. I mean, easy for me to say, but it would be a real shame if that let them stop their training. It's because I've been so useless that I want to make sure I'm doing whatever I can to get closer to being number Imagine one. Imagine Deku being useless. Don't you think that All Might can introduce you to a bunch of new people? If anyone can. The first one that comes to mind is his former sidekick. <sighs> former sidekick? There's definitely a story there. Hey guys, I'm back, and I brought that dude. It's funny how he he formidable Shigaraki so feels, despite He's not quiet, having screen time. Cool. Because he of his not having screen like time. Real creep. There he is. Even without him speaking, I know he's a lot calmer, a lot more determined. The entrusted successor, and the successor released into the wild. Soon, they would meet. My classmates and I are going beyond! Oh, this is a season 4 preview? My Hero Academia isn't done yet! Academia, that always throws me off. <laughs> All right, that wasn't much. So yeah, it's very interesting. They did use the last two episodes as setup of some really cool elements for the following season, I guess, which makes a lot of sense. You know, one of the things I love about the show so much is that very, very little of it feels wasted. It's always building. And so the season distinction is sort of like whatever, you know, it doesn't really matter. But just looking at it as a season, season three is pretty, pretty incredible. Even though it's not an unusual number of episodes, it feels like it covers the most ground to me. And that's just a gut feeling. I can't really even say why. I mean, just so much happens, right? Like we get this whole rise of the villains thing. We get the insane twist of All Might losing his power 
power and really turning the lens on the on the kids. You get this amazing standout episode of Bakugo versus Deku. A ton of character introductions, many of which will probably be significant going forward. The show starting to take a, a more complex look at heroes and symbolism and maybe the, the flaws of the All Might system or the hero world as a whole, showing that people are left behind. Revealing all for one, but like the heroes having the torch passed to Shigaraki. And so there's a lot to be excited about for season four, especially with this feeling that the villains have been planning something big. You know, they've been growing their base. They seem convicted. They have public support. They're emboldened. The heroes and the government, I guess by extension, are kind of on their back foot. And All Might's gone. And so it's really just like this growing group of villains against the class of 1A and supporting students as well. And so my feeling ending this season and going into season four is just hype. Like I'm really excited to see where, where they go from here. I feel like we haven't even hit bottom yet. We haven't hit bottom of the problems of hero society. And I feel like that's gonna have some pretty major impact on our heroes, maybe especially for Deku. Like what happens when Deku, who just wants what's good for everyone and cares about helping people over like a class of heroes, let's say, or over victory over one's enemies, like some other characters, comes into contact with some of the stuff that Twice was saying about how there are people left behind and about how the society does not not support certain people. This thought occurred to me in the shopping mall when Deku met Shigaraki and I, you know, it just feels to me like ultimately Deku is the kind of person who would want to help Shigaraki, not just see him as an enemy. And All Might also had that reflection, right? All Might was thinking about how he could help him, but Gran Torino was sort of like, you're underestimating him as an enemy. So that that's there, right? That's lurking. And it's not just Shigaraki. It's like a lot of the, a lot of the villains. Then you add in the fact that Hero is such a complex thing in the show and that one element of it, maybe even the predominant element in the way that the characters talk about it, is the licensing which is from the government, which does not necessarily imbue it with any kind of value collective, right? It's just a group. And who knows who's at the helm of that? What guarantee do we have that that will always be a just thing in the public interest or connected to actually good interests over selfish ones, etc.? So there's a lot of potential for just so many things to be explored. You want to explore it because really what anchors the whole thing down is that the characters are likable and the characters feel rich and they become more interesting as time goes on. You know, like Bakugo is a great example in this season of someone who just took on so much much life compared to what we've seen before. So yeah, that's the end of another amazing season. Thank you to everybody who has followed and supported the series so far. Love you guys, and I will see you very, very soon for the start of season four.